Did you get a Ninja Creamy for Christmas this year? Well, you're in luck because today I'm sharing with you my top Ninja Creamy mistakes that I've been seeing over and over during my research and my play period with this thing. I've had it for about a month and a half, so let me share with you things to avoid with your new Ninja Creamy. The absolute first thing you should do right now on your phone, right now, pull it out, is order new pints. The Ninja Creamy comes with two included pints. However, I don't think two is nearly enough to really take full advantage of this machine. First thing you should do is go on Amazon and buy the official Ninja Creamy replacement pints. I got, I think, three or four of them in a box. The only thing is they are taking kind of a long time to ship. So make sure you get your order in like as soon as possible because you'll want a lot of them to experiment. If one's in the freezer, it's kind of hard to want to make another flavor until this one's done. So it takes a long time to experiment with definitely buy some extra pints. Now this video is not going to go into the specifics of making any flavors of the ingredients. If you want any unboxing or flavor videos, then just check out this video right here where I talk about unboxing the machine, trying out my first five flavors. That one's really fun, but this is all about mistakes. The first mistake that I keep seeing over and over again in Facebook groups and online is not thawing your pints after they freeze. So yes, you do have to freeze these for 24 hours. However, if you spin and process your ice cream pints right out of the freezer when they're rock hard, that can damage your machine. I've seen reports where the blades will get stuck in the ice cream or that they will come and damage the sides of the pints and they'll like actually scratch up and kind of kind of eat the plastic inside because it gets like off kilter and stuff. So you need to make sure that when you take out your pints from the freezer, just let them sit out for about 10, 15 minutes and then you'll get a really nice, wonderful result without breaking your machine. Here's another mistake I see is if you're not going to finish this entire pint in one sitting, you can just refreeze it but you need to make sure that you're flattening the top just like you would before processing it. So this one, I've got some strawberry yogurt. It's like all over the place. I'm just gonna take a spoon and just flatten it out on the top. So then it's nice and smooth and ready to reprocess after I freeze it again. Another thing you can do is you can take out this yogurt or this ice cream or whatever you make, put it into like a Ziploc or a, some other container and then it frees up your pint for a different flavor. But don't leave your leftovers in here just like how you're eating out of your Ben and Jerry's pint and just leaving it whatever. You need to make sure you flatten the top. The next mistake that could be really critical and that could damage your machine forever is not freezing your pints on a flat surface. So when you fill up your pints and you freeze them, you need to make sure that they aren't, you know, going into the freezer on, at an angle. You're not putting them in a chest full of just random stuff so the liquid's going everywhere and it's freezing at an angle. You want to make sure that it's very flat, otherwise the machine could get really damaged. In that same breath, when you freeze liquid, it expands and some liquid will expand like this, so there's kind of a little bulge in the middle. It will kind of have that little bump. If that happens, that's totally fine, but you need to make sure that you flatten it out before you process it in the Ninja Creamy. So to do that, I just take a spoon and I just kind of scrape. I take a spoon or a fork or an ice cream scoop and I just kind of scrape that top bulge off and kind of level it out to make it a nice flat level surface to process in the Ninja Creamy. This is also a lot easier when you let it sit out at room temperature for about five to 10 minutes, depending on how cold and how full your pint is. One of the other mistakes that I'm seeing a lot online is people complaining that their ice cream is kind of chunky and that the ingredients are not blended all the way. This is especially prominent in recipes where you're using cream cheese as the binder and the thickener. That recipe is the included recipe be in the Ninja Creamy cookbook, which is amazing. It tastes so good. However, if you do not blend your ingredients well enough before you freeze them, when you process them, yes, you will get some chunks and it's not going to be completely blended. So to remedy this, make sure that if you're ever using cream cheese or ingredients that are a little bit thicker, that you one, melt them down in the microwave, soften them up, and then incorporate them completely into your liquid base. That means if you're using cream cheese, make sure you microwave that for you know about 30 seconds and then add your sugar. Make sure that's dissolved all the way before you add your other liquid ingredients. Then you want to blend that really well, either with a whisk, an immersion blend, 
blender or you can even use like a magic bullet or a blender and then you put it in your pint. You wanna make sure those ingredients are nice and blended and incorporated before you freeze them. One of the top complaints I'm seeing a lot is their Ninja Creamy pints feeling very chalky or powdery after processing the first time. This is a really common complaint and it's not hard to remedy. So the mistake is not re-spinning. This re-spin button on your Ninja Creamy is like your best friend. I almost always just do one cycle on whatever setting I'm using, whether that's ice cream, light ice cream, or sorbet, and then I'll take the pine out. And if it looks a little powdery or, you know, just like not super creamy, all I do is I just take a spoon, I kind of mix it up a little bit, I flatten it back down so it's flat on the surface, and then re-spin. You don't want to use the same setting as before because it's not quite as hard as it was, but when you re-spin, it really just like makes a huge difference and it will be not powdery at all. Sometimes you need to respin more than once and if you're still having issues like especially if you're not using real dairy if you're using sugar substitutes you may need to add just a little touch of extra liquid whether that's almond oat milk milk whatever you want to just add a little bit of liquid to help kind of spin that and make it a little bit creamier so that is something you need to keep in mind if it's not super creamy the first time just respin add a little liquid and respin again another thing is if your ice cream or whatever you froze in your pint is a little powdery that it may be too cold. So like I said earlier, just let it sit out for a couple more minutes, let it melt just a touch, and then you can keep going. One mistake that I saw was people trying to get a little creative and frugal without buying extra pints. So what I saw was people were taking these pints, they were putting like a plastic bag in here and then filling it up with <laughs> their ingredient of choice, freezing it and then taking the bags out. So then they could just have like these little pucks that they could take out of the freezer from these bags and put them in the pints. Don't do that, please. They have to freeze in the actual pints. If you see on the bottom here, there's these little ridges. These are really important to keep like the pint stabilized in here. And they really need to kind of be hugging the sides of this pint. If you use like plastic bags, it's going to just spin the whole thing because it's not going to be tight in there. It will 100% damage your machine. Your blade might fall off. It might come off onto the plastic. It's just not a good idea. So please just buy some extra bites. This last mistake I'm seeing a lot is people just getting super paralyzed about what to do. It's a little overwhelming when you don't exactly know what to do here. So here are my suggestions is number one, use the cookbook that came in the Ninja Creamy box. Those recipes have been fantastic. I've used a bunch of them and they're so good. The vanilla ice cream one, fantastic. That's probably the best vanilla ice cream homemade concoction I've made. That is so delicious. And there are tons and tons of different ideas and mix-ins and different things that they suggest to help you kind of get started. The other thing is make sure that you're joining Facebook groups online. Those are so valuable and so fun to see all the creative creativity in there. I'm in a couple of the Ninja Creamy Facebook groups where people are sharing their super creative creation. So some of the ones I've seen, you know, a lot of people do sugar-free and dairy-free. So they're mixing like protein drinks with sugar-free jello or sugar-free pudding. They're mixing pie filling or whole pieces of pie with just like, you know, a little bit of cream, a little bit of cream cheese, some whipped cream, whatever they can find. Honestly, they're making these pints and they're making really creative, healthier, delicious ice creams and sorbets that fit into their own dietary lifestyle choices. And that's really Really cool. It's really empowering to know what goes into your food. That's something I'm very passionate about and I think people are really kind of catching on to right now. So this is a really good machine for just customizing and doing things that fit into your lifestyle. Well, thanks for watching these Ninja Creamy mistakes. If you like this video, you need to make sure you watch this one. It's my favorite one ingredient Ninja Creamy recipes. These are really easy, fun. They're like good beginner recipes. And there's a whole Ninja Creamy playlist I'll put over here as well. So have a good one and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oops. Whoa. <laughs>